you going to do this for? What does a balloon and Emily's static hair and electrostatic spray have in common? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Stay tuned if you're getting any electrostatic shocks from your electrostatic sprayer. I'll explain what it is. I'm Ollie, and welcome to Source. So we've had a few calls and emails from customers asking what that strange little tiny electrostatic shock is when they're using their, their sprayer. What it is is an ESD, which is electrostatic discharge. Same thing happens to your hair when you rub a balloon on it. It creates a static electricity. Uh, and also the same thing that happens when you might be wearing plastic-soled shoes and you're walking along a floor tiles, kind of nylon-y carpet and you then touch a metal handle, you get that tiny little shock. First of all, it's nothing to worry about. So I would rest assured that it's nothing wrong with the machine or it's not gonna present any sort of health issues or danger. It is quite simply a buildup of electrostatic electricity which needs to go somewhere. And there are a few ways which you can negate that process and reduce the chances of that ESD occurring. I am going to distance myself from sounding like I know what I'm talking about. I've researched this with Victory themselves and done some YouTube Googling myself and have found a few videos which are going to be much more comprehensive than this one when it comes to explaining from a scientific point of view exactly what an ESD is and I've linked those in the description below. Okay, so I have printed off a copy which again is linked in the description below to the PDF from Victory Innovations who make the electrostatic sprayer and they have quite simply given us five or six different ways to advise our customers of how they can avoid or reduce the chances of experiencing an electrostatic discharge. Number one is to make sure that the sprayer is fully dry on the outside. Sometimes when you're filling it up you can just be a little bit careless with the fluid or the tap water coming into the chamber. Just make sure that the electrostatic sprayer is fully, fully dried off. Number two is to make sure that the operator's hands are fully dry when doing the spraying. If you have any residue or moisture on your hands, that's only going to increase the likelihood of having an ESD. Number three is to make sure you're not walking into the spray. Now that's quite tricky because sometimes you're spraying ahead of you and you're walking into it. So one would suggest maybe spraying and walking backwards or spraying from a side to side uh, strategy before going straight through the path of your spray. So that takes some thought and some planning when it comes to actually doing the spraying. And number four, this one's a bit quirky. Wear a rubber glove on the hand that isn't pressing the trigger. So I've kind of gone into the fifth point as well, which is to wear a glove on your other hand and make sure that this hand here, you see there's a little metal strip, that's called the grounding strip. And if your bare hand is on there, then that's good. So there is another point on this document from Victory that answers the question, how do you dissipate electrostatic charge? Uh, and that's where my limitations find their glass ceiling, to be honest, because I don't feel comfortable talking uh, about how to do that and trying to present it in layman's terms as though I actually know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to just refer that process back into the document, which is linked in the description below. So there we have it, that was my summary of what an ESD is. Hopefully I answered a few questions and put a few minds at rest. Like I said at the top of the video, I'm not an expert and there is a, a comprehensive video linked in the description below to a much deeper dive from an expert about ESDs. So thank you for watching, see you in the next one.